Okay, so continuation of the last video. We're gonna delete this thing. Okay, so in the last video, I basically spent eight minutes saying how this CPU is the exact same as the 7950X3D with that one CCD turned off. So in this video, we're gonna try to delive this thing. I'm not sure if we're gonna be successful, but the goal of that is to try and remove that thermal wall, that thermal barrier preventing us from clocking this CPU any higher. And then with that, hopefully the goal is, can we see if this thing can scale with the clock speed once it runs cooler? And then hopefully speaking with direct die and tuned memory to the max, can this thing take the performance crown handedly away from Intel? So before we actually get into the delitting of this thing, let's go upstairs and just get some stock numbers out of it. We'll just use like Cinebench or something, just get some stock clock speeds, stock temperatures. We're using a custom loop today with a 360 mil radiator. Nothing fancy, but much better than your normal AIO. And then we'll delit it, and then we'll run the same tests after and see if it, well, if it, if it works, but you know, we'll see if it actually makes a difference. Okay, so we've got the build here. It's still just running completely stock right now, just um, with a 360 cold water. It's a fresh boot with an EK water block. And then we're just running it on 100% defaults, like 100% stock, stock PBO and everything. So let's run um, Cinebench. And then let's see the average clock speed and the temperature of it. So let's do that. Run. We're going we're gonna to go here. Oh, there we go. Okay. So average clock speed, 4.7 gigahertz. Package is about 80, 81. All right. Let's see what the... Hardware info has to say. CPU die average 80, IOD 40, CPU 82. Yeah, so about 80 to 82 degrees on Cinebench, and she's still clocking at 47, 4.7 gigahertz rock solid. No fluctuations on that. So that's pretty good, I want to say. Okay, now that we got our stock numbers, let's go wish me luck. I mean, I hope I don't rip off the 3D cache or anything on this thing, but, but let, let's, let's go try YOLO. You guys silly? I'm still going to send it. So we're going to go ahead and use this uh, D-Lid die made from Der Bauer here. It's a pretty neat idea. Actually, hang on. It, it, it's like you, you put the CPU in and then you kind of wiggle it back and forth like this and then it loosens the solder till you can pull it out, right? So it's a really neat idea what he did here. <sighs> so, all right, arrow to arrow. Okay, arrow to arrow, put it in. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Uh, let's put the, uh, making sure it's centered. This is a very, this is the reason why I'm so hesitant for this one is it's because uh, this is not like any of the other ones I've ever done, right? It's very unique. I've, I've deleted uh, uh, AM, AM4 CPUs before, but not this, right? So, hesitant is the word. Oh, it's moving very easily. Very easily. Huh, okay. I was expecting a lot more resistance than that. Let's try the other way. Yeah. It's like barely any resistance on this at all. A few moments later. One eternity later. Oh, shit. 
Oh shit. Oh. Nice job, yeah. Good job, Der Bauer, man. That was a flawless D-lid. Absolutely zero issues there. Great. That was worth it. Okay, let me let me zoom in here for you guys here. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so I think I got it here. Nothing to really indicate any damage. I didn't knock any capacitors off. I kind of polished the tops a little bit. Um, other than that though, yeah, I don't think, uh, nothing seems fine. So the only way to find out is to actually throw it in. So let's go do that next, but so far so good. So I put some thermal paste on the dies for now, and this is how we're gonna check to see if it's actually making contact, right? So you put the thermal paste on there, clamp this down, put some pressure on it, lift it back up. Um, no, that's not, no. So I didn't find any uh, standoffs, but I did find some random screws and some random springs that should work. Let's try this out. Okay, let's take it off. It definitely made con, oh, there we go. Nice. Okay. That'll do, Donkey. There's a little, uh... So I gotta apply a bit more pressure on the top left area, but the bottom and the... Yeah. So... I think that worked out okay. Yeah, okay. So... Okay, so I got the liquid metal on now, and now we're gonna do the exact same procedure that we did with the paste, because basically if you misjudge this and you turn the computer on and it's not making contact, like it's not gonna cool the CPU, basically say goodbye to your CPU, so. Okay, all right. So, middle, the middle die, the, the IO die, looks like it made full contact but the bottom one looks like it made contact with most of it, but not quite. Okay, we're all set. Let's turn it on. Hope it doesn't blow up. Let's go. No, zeros. That's not good. That's not good. Okay, so the first attempt was a fail. I just took it off and nothing looks damaged or like, I don't know. Everything looks fine. Uh, maybe I'll clean off the liquid metal and try it again and then do a reseat. Yeah, I don't see any cracks or anything. I don't know, interesting. Yeah, you know what, I, I've done... um. I've tried direct dies like this in the past with like 9th gen and 10th gen and stuff, and I could never get them to work, honestly. Uh, it, there's always issues like RAM slots not working or not enough pressure or whatever. So I shouldn't be surprised that this is the same, but I'll try one more time. So it's the next day, and I've been screwing around for a bit. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera, but there is a hairline reflection in the IO die in the center, right in the center. Now, I'm not sure if this is picking it up, but basically, but basically, because it's directly in the center of the die, I'm assuming I put too much mounting pressure and broke it. So she is dead now, which is very crazy because I barely even did it. I didn't even do it finger tight, right? Like it's a uh, the like I've done direct eyes before and I know how much pressure to put but holy crap is this thing soft right but so video over I suppose right except I went to the store and bought another one because mama didn't raise no quitter 
Now, AMD fanboys can't tell me that I didn't try my best on this one. But with that being said, I am once again asking for your financial support. This video was brought to you by the supporters of the channel. Not every tech channel can just go out and buy a new CPU to finish off some content. That being said, if you do believe in the vision here at Frame Chasers of a bias-free, sponsorship-free review tech channel, go to the website below, become a supporter. You'll get access to the greatest community on the internet, all the while supporting my work here. So I'm not going to do the same thing with the second CPU here because um, I just need proper standoffs and I don't have them and I don't feel like filing them down right now. And it's too risky. I can't afford to buy another one, right? So I'm going to just do the same thing that I do on all my Intel CPUs when I benchmark those. I'm just going to use the stock IHS lapped and I'm going to liquid metal and then just use a stock cooler on it. This should still provide, in my experience in the past, within four, three or four degree difference between this and direct dye anyway. So we should still see insane temperature improvements. But it is what it is for this video. Maybe we'll try direct dye in the future, but I, I cannot risk it for this one. So if you believe in my vision here, go to the website and help support. Okay, so I got the second CPU in now. Let's just give it a quick power on to make sure it posts and I didn't break this one too. This shouldn't show zero, zero. Oh yeah, we're good right away. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. Oh yeah, so there you go. So if, if you're gonna be doing something like this, the Derbauer D-Lib kit, I've done two of them now, works just fine both times. I would just go with this though. I can already tell, even before we do any benchmarks and stuff, just do this way. Use the stock IHS. It's there for a reason. It performs well enough. I already know, like, we, before that. But let's go throw it on the test bench and see what we can get out of it. Okay, so we're in here. We're running full defaults in stock. Let's do, uh, let's do a lighter load first. I just want to make sure nothing uh, is going to blow up or... Okay, 64, 65... Uh, she's boosting to 5 gigahertz all core out of the box with a D-lit and liquid metal. That's pretty good, 60 watts power, yeah. Okay, that seems fine. Let's try, let's try Cinebench. All right, here we go, Cinebench time. Tit run. Seventy-five. Damn, that's still pretty damn hot. Going at four point eight gigahertz. So I just checked the previous footage now, and I was wrong. So it was running at four point seven gigahertz on the other CPU. Now it's running at four point eight gigahertz, and uh, it was it was running at about eighty-two, eighty-three Celsius. Now it's running at seventy-five Celsius. So we actually gained. 100 megahertz with a 7 degree Celsius drop. Uh, I guess that's okay. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty cheap mod after all. So it looks like 5.1 is the max that I can get on this CPU specifically. Uh, keeping it at the same temperature as stock numbers, right? In Cinebench. You can get it to boost higher. See, it's about 80-ish Celsius. You can get it to boost higher uh, in gaming workloads. Cinebench is quite a heavy workload, right? So we're doing 5.1-ish at about 80, right? So at 5.1. So we got, so we went from 4.7 gigahertz to 5.1 gigahertz at the same temperature. So 400 megahertz, I want to say. I guess, okay, so that's not bad. That's pretty good for a D-Lid, 400 megahertz. That's quite good. So let's uh, let's jump and do a um, just a quick shadow of the Tomb Raider and see what happens. Okay, so let's run Tomb Raider. See what's going on here. Let's check this out. So we got all right. She's running, man. It's the CPU is still at eighty Celsius. That's insane. Check the clock speed. Fifty one fifty. 51 oh it's even it's even thermal throttling a little bit too check the uh yeah we're still at 
So even with the D-Lid, it's at 85 Celsius. It's pulling 80 watts. So it's just, man, that's actually insane. 85 watts, even with the D-Lid, it just runs way too damn hot, man. All right, I'm redoing the benchmark now, but instead I did that um, 5.1 locked profile that I did before on Cinebench. So hopefully that removes all the fluctuations and shit now, and then we'll see if there's any improvement at all in this, uh, in this benchmark here. Okay, so this is the best score that I've ever gotten, but if you actually go back to my 7950X 3D review video, the 1% lows are also higher as well, but um, this is only 2% faster than my non delitted benchmark. So, yeah, if you want to delid your CPU, you can get an extra 2% out of it, I suppose. So, yeah, even though we got like an extra 200 megahertz during this benchmark with the delid, that 200 megahertz only yielded about 2% in actual F real world FPS. It did increase the lows too though, so that's quite interesting. So it still might be worth going and benchmarking other games, but it seems like for now, not really a burger at all, not really worth it. So delitting the 3D chip, it's okay, I guess. I was expecting more, but after thinking about it for a bit, it kind of does make sense. There's nothing you can really do to counteract the heat density of a 3D stacked die on top of a, a core die. So you can make the top layer as cool as you want, but there's nothing you can do about the heat coming in from the bottom, right? So that's why these CPUs get so damn hot. The non-3D variants don't actually get as hot as these ones do. And if you think about it mathematically, it does make sense. What did we actually get out of this? 200 megahertz maybe on a gaming clock? You get about the same on Intel anyway, right? So you buy a 13900KS, you delit it, and then it's what, 5.6 gigahertz all core stock? You might get 5.8 all core out of it as well with a delit and a lap, right? So about 200 megahertz, about 2%. So Ryzen or Intel, it's about the same, I guess. I don't think I'm gonna bother with a direct die again just because even though we dropped 10 Celsius on this thing and we got another 200 megahertz, realistically, what could I achieve? Like, like, like theoretically speaking, let's say we drop another 10 Celsius and get another 200 megahertz. That would just be another 2%. It's not worth it. So if you're like an enthusiast and you want to pick one of these things up, I would say go for it because just using the stock IHS and giving it a nice lap and putting it back in the socket, it's perfectly safe to do. And I would say most mechanically inclined people could get it to work, right? But I mean, when it comes to the direct die, even I broke that thing, right? And I kind of know what I'm doing. And I've had years experience doing this and for what, an extra one or 2%, right? So stock IHS is a thumbs up, uh, direct die, D-lid, thumbs down. It's not worth a $500 blowout, right? So in the next video, because I gotta milk one more to help pay for this thing, become a supporter down below. So now that this CPU is delitted, running cool, running fast, at its best, in the next video, let's take a different 10 games and benchmark them against Intel. That way we have about 20 different games altogether. And then we'll take the total of the 20 and finally announce a real gaming crown for one of these platforms. So make sure to subscribe down below because you don't want to miss that content. And if you liked this content where I killed a CPU, hit that subscribe button, do all that YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, subscribe, comment down below what you thought of the direct die attempt. And I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.